So where did God come from exactly? And who is this God guy anyway? First of all, we need to clearly define which God we're talking about. The God I'm talking about in this video is the God of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran. I'm Aaron Ra, and you're watching Atheist Edge. He's had many names over the centuries. El, which is the King of Gods or the Most High God. Aloha. El Shaddai. Eya, which means I am. El Sabaoth, which is the God of War. Ja or Ya, Sebeot, which is God of Hosts, El Elohim, which started out as a plural, but then was also referred to as a singular and a proper name for God, Tetragrammaton, Allah, Eya Asher Eya, El Elyon, God Most High, El Adonai, Yahu, Yihu, Yo, and Ella, and a lot of others. For the rest of the video, we're just going to call him by his most popular name today, Yahweh. Okay, so when did people start worshiping Yahweh? During the Bronze Age, from 1550 to 1200 BCE, Yahweh was a war god of ancient Canaan. He was worshipped alongside a pantheon of other gods. Among these were his brother Baal or Baal, his sister Anat, his father, which was the Most High God, El, now at this time, when Yahweh was still part of the polytheistic Canaanite pantheon, El was a separate deity. You didn't get ahead of myself, but they get conflated later on once the Israelites break off from Canaan and become their own separate society. And El's consort or wife was Asherah or Asherah. In total, El had at least 70 sons and daughters, with Yahweh included. In other writings and other sources from ancient history, uh, he had up to 77 or even 88 sons and daughters. Note, at this time, Israelites did not exist. They were still firmly part of Canaan. They were still Canaanites. It is not until the late Bronze Age when Israel developed its own identity, separate from Canaan, split from Canaan, and took Yahweh as their main god with them. So they took this lesser war god from the old pantheon and made that their most high god. The earliest mention of Yahweh was under the name Shashu of Yahweh in an Egyptian inscription from the time of Amenhotep III, somewhere between 1402 to 1363 BCE. The current consensus is that Egyptian traders originally brought this name Yahweh with them to the Southern Levant Canaan. By the early Iron Age, Israel had its own separate identity and was fully independent from the rest of the Canaanites. The earliest known reference to Israel as being separate from Canaan is on a stele or a stone tablet from 1208 BCE. This tablet lists Israel among the many conquered lands by the pharaoh Merneptah. Although the Bible draws a clear distinction between Canaanites and Israelites, the overwhelming modern consensus is that there is absolutely no difference in the language and culture. Let me emphasize, modern scholars define the early Iron Age Israelites as one of many subsets of Canaanite culture 
newly emerging. When Israel split from Canaan, they didn't just take Yahweh with them. They didn't, the Israelites did not just automatically become monotheistic. They took a host of other gods with them originally. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 8 and 9, El Elyon, the God Most High, is still Yahweh's father. When El Elyon, the Most High God, gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God, but the Lord's portion in his people, Jacob his allotted heritage. At this time, and in the earliest of the biblical scripture, Yahweh is still just a lesser God in a pantheon. Judges chapter 5, verses 4, 5, and 20 say, Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured, the clouds also poured water, the mountains gushed before the Lord, this Sinai before the Lord God of Israel. From the heavens the stars fought, from their courses they fought against Sisera. By the second Iron Age, 1000 to 586 BCE, Canaan spawned myriad new subset of cultures. Judah, Philistia, Moab, Ammon, Edom, Phoenicia, and of course Israel, firmly independent at this time. It was also at this time that Israel evolved from polytheism to monolatry, which is the worship of a single God, but acknowledging the existence of others. So during this time period, when the first books of the Old Testament were being written, Israelites did not deny the existence of other gods, but they worshiped only one, Yahweh. The Philistines split off from Canaan as well, but instead of Yahweh, they borrowed Dagon. The Moabites took Chemosh, the Ammonites adopted Milcom. The Edomites chose Kos. The Phoenicians took Melkart. And of course, the Israelites took Yahweh, the war god, which kind of explains why there's a lot of war and a lot of commands to go to war and lay siege to other nations in the Old Testament. Now, the Second Iron Age is the period when the Israelites kind of merged the original El from the Canaanite pantheon with their god, Yahweh. They merged the names, so now Yahweh's name is synonymous with El as well. But what about Asherah? This was originally El's wife. Well, the Israelites borrowed her too, so now Asherah is not Yahweh's mom, but his consort, his wife. Although Asherah was not being worshipped alongside Yahweh, again, remember this is a monolaterist society now. They still acknowledged her existence, of course, and the temple in Jerusalem still displayed the Asherah poles. So now we have 12 fully independent Israelite tribes. 10 are in Israel, two are south in Judah. The 10 in Israel around 700 BCE were conquered by the Assyrians. They were taken captive, the survivors were taken captive and they never came back. They were assimilated into Assyrian culture. They were called the lost 10 tribes. We never heard from them again. So now the only remaining Israelite tribes are Judah and Benjamin in the south. Not too long after that, the Babylonians conquered Judah and the last two remaining Israelite tribes. This was in 605 BCE. The survivors were exiled back to Babylon 
But instead of being assimilated, they retained their culture. They were allowed to retain their culture. And this is really the only reason Judeo-Christianity even exists today. So from 597 to 581 BCE, all the remaining Israelites were brought to Babylon. The temple in Jerusalem has crumbled. The last remaining Israelites are in chains. Towards the end of this Babylonian captivity, the very existence of any other gods was completely denied and Yahweh became the only God making Israelite in 332 BCE fully monotheistic. So there you have it, the origin of Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, the Book of Mormon, and a few others. A deity that just started as a lesser war god amongst a pantheon of Canaanite gods. And remember, it took at least 700 years for Yahweh's original followers to start worshiping Him exclusively. If you find this information overly provocative, historically inaccurate, or unnecessarily confrontational in any way, I can only tell you this. If you disagree with me, you represent a fringe minority opinion. The information in this video is supported by the overwhelming consensus of subject matter experts in their respective fields to include archaeology, anthropology, and academic religious studies. I did quite a bit of reading in preparation for this short video. Among the books that I've read over the last two or three months are A History of God by Karen Armstrong, The Early History of God by Mark S. Smith, The Bible Unearthed by Israel Finkelstein, and Introduction to the History of Christianity by Timothy Dowley. Links to those four references will be in the description section of this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up consider subscribing and we will see you next time.